hello readers welcome to my channel it's introduction to group theory so this is the series of lecture which will deal with group theory so my aim is to deal the following the first thing is that i will deal some some of the properties of integers like so i'll say that this is prerequisites or preliminaries second thing i'll start this definition of groups and examples groups and examples then I will go to the subgroups, cyclic groups, and more important, permutation group. In the meanwhile, we will see some of the geometrical significance of the group theory, that why we are reading group theory. Then we will move to the Centralizer, normalizer, and then homomorphism. And then we will move to the quotient group or subgroup. And in this way, we will proceed to the till the silo scale. So this is the so this is the outline of the course. In between, I will see that what I have to fill, and I'll made a another series of lectures for the solution of the book that I will I'm going to follow. So I, I follow the book Galleon Galleon Contemporary Abstract Algebra. And the, the thing is that this this book contains lot many problems. So I'll give the hint. So in the in the in the next series of the lectures, I I'll give the hints for each of the problems or most of the problems. Okay, yeah. So first see. So let's start with the preliminaries. So we will see um, the, the preliminaries why we are reading because in the group theory we will see that some of the thing that we are going to read is, go is going to be used everywhere in the group theory in each step. So first thing I will try to mention, I will not to write the proof of this, I will just rather tell you the theorems and stuff. So first thing is that Well ordering principle. So it says that a non empty subset of a non empty subset of natural number have a smallest type. This statement looks like trivial, but it's very important. In number theory and in the theory. second is division algorithm. So this tells that if A and B are two all two integers, so if A and B are two integers. With, let's say let's say both are non-zero without loss of generality I can assume that both are non-zero so there exist Q and R in Z and this existence is unique so this tells that there exist unique there exist unique Q and R in Z 
सस्ता है a equals to b cube plus r where r is greater than equals to zero and less than b. So this is the division algorithm. Let's see one of the example of this. So so you have examples of this. So let's see that. So suppose that your a is let's say minus two minus five and b is let's say or minus 50 and b is let's say um, 7 so i write minus 50 equals to 7 into um, minus 8 plus 6 so you see that this is the so i can't write see there is a possibility to write minus 50 equals to 7 into minus 7 and minus 1 but i can't write this because this r is negative which is not permissible here okay so this is not permissible. So this is the division algorithm. So just uh, I, I sketch the proof of the division algorithm. Just see the sketch of the proof. So I'll just sketch the proof. I'll not write the proof form. I just construct a set S with this, which, which is the collection of all remainders type of things. So you just see how the remainders will look like so the remainders will look like a minus bq so, so I, I construct all the a minus bq such that a and b are integers non-zero and a minus bq at the same time is greater than equal to zero so what you will have to show first thing you show this s is non-empty second thing is this c s is a subset of n so so using well ordering principle this has the least element or smallest element and you will prove that that smallest element is basically r This is the thing that we th this is and for the uniqueness part is very easy for uniqueness is trivial that we can use uniqueness is easy to prove and so you do it so I'll just leave an exercise this if you have a problem just leave the comment now let's move to the next best thing that is called GCD greatest common divisor greatest common divisor let's say GCD so as the name suggests first thing it's the common divisor and then it is the greatest among all the common divisors so I, I just write the definition first so the definition goes like this Suppose that you have two integers a and b both are non-zero. So a b are non-zero integers. Okay. Then b it's set to be the so the just as I'm writing d it means that this it is unique to be the GCD of A and B and you mind it D is greater than equal to zero. So D is greater than zero. B if first thing is that that D divides A and D divides B and second thing is that so this tells that D is a common divisor A and B the second thing is that if C divides A and C divides D sorry C divides A and C divides B then C has to do it so this tells that it is the greatest comma
and it's denoted by in small bracket a p. So this is the C D of So now I will pro I'll, I, I, I'll give an algorithm that is division algorithm so that's called Euclidean algorithm for finding out GCD of two numbers. So Euclidean algorithm for finding out the GCD of so this is the equilibrium algorithm is basically a division algorithm. So it is nothing but the division algorithm. Yeah. So let, let's let's do for example I just uh, compute one of the T C D. So let's we have let's say mm -hmm. let's say we have 72 and 10 uh, or, or beta 74 and 10 well, 10 ok so what I will do so from it so let's set this is the time so 74 I can write 10 into 7 plus 4 now what I will do I will just I will again reduce this 10 by this see how it is in your early childhood you, you did it like this you have did it now you divide it by 4 then if you like this so in the same way we write 4 into 2 plus 2 now this 4 is there and this 2 is there so I write this 4 equal to 2, into 2. so hence the GCD of 74 and 10 plus 2, 2 so this is see how easy by this method for finding GCD, and even we can write programs for finding the GCD. Yeah. Now, one of the mm, mm, very much very good application for the GCD is mm, that if D is the GCD of A and B, then D can be written as the linear combination of A and B then D can be written as the linear not the linear the linear combination A B it means that D equals to AX plus b y and see this x and y may not be unique so this x and y may not be unique. for example in the last example that we have seen that the gcd of 74 and 10 is 2 so i want to write this 2 as the linear combination of 74 and 10 so how will you do this so let's do this 74 into 2 minus 10 into or let's say 10 into so so 74 into 2 is nothing but 148 so if i write this as mm, so i write this as minus and i write this as 15 So this is nothing but 74 into minus 2 plus 10 into 5. So you see that this is 2. 
So and you, you and you probably have seen that this is not unique. Now, how will I find that uh, x and y in an arbitrary way? Suppose that if we have two numbers, let's say a and b, and we know the g series is d, then how will you find x and y? Because here the guessing is was easy, but in general the guess was not easy. So the, the, we will use the same Euclidean algorithm, but the back travels. So let's see the how will you use this Euclidean algorithm. So you have this Euclidean algorithm. See. So what I will do, I'll have to write this two as a linear combination of 74 and 10. So I write two equals to from this state. I can write two equals to 10 minus. 4 into 2. Now this 4 I can write this again 4. So this 4 I can write 7 to 4 minus 10 into 7 into 2. So now you see that this is equals to 70, uh, 10 into so this 7 to the 14 into 15. So 10 into 15 minus 74 into 2 you see that I got the same 